Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to another morning ramble, and I'm feeling very morning. Uh, I am excited. I am in, I don't know where I am, Pebble Beach, um, and I'm about to go play a round of golf with a good friend at uh, the Lynx at Spanish Bay, which I have really no idea what that is, but it sounds super cool, and it's beautiful here. Uh, but that's not what I wanted to ramble about. I. I was thinking over the last couple of days, always dangerous, but I've been I've been thinking about neediness. And and it sort of came out in a conversation with my wife where I realized, oh, I do really well when there's no sense in my mind that I need something to work in order for it to work. Now that's not revelatory, I'm sure you are the same, you know that feeling, you're like, well, duh. But it had never dawned on me before, two things. The first is, that's really true. Like I know that's a ridiculous thing to say, but the difference between how I approach something, how I perform, when I know it's, I'm, I'm good, I'm playing with the house's money. And how I perform when I think there's something big on the line is huge. Now, so I'm not suggesting sometimes, you know, playing the game, putting something on the line actually can kind of sharpen your focus and sharpen your attention. So it's not so much just about pressure, the feeling of pressure. There's something about that sense that if I don't, bad things happen that puts you into an immediate state of tension. And tension is just the enemy of high performance. But the thing that I saw this morning that I, I have never seen before, it's never occurred to me before, is that neediness is made of thought. There's no such thing as neediness. That feeling of not enough, that feeling of, yeah, I've got to, unless, all of that, I mean, you can even hear it in the way I'm describing it, is thought. And if it's thought, well, I don't have to think that. Now, those of you who've been watching me, listening to me, reading me, <laughs> whatever you've done with me, like for a while, no, that doesn't mean we control our thoughts and we must stop our, those thoughts and make these thoughts happen. It's, it's just noticing that as the thinker, as the focuser of our own attention, if, if a certain kind of thinking, let's call it needy thinking, produces a certain kind of feeling, let's call it needy. And as Steve Chandler, my, my good friend and mentor often says, needy is creepy, but it also really limits our own creativity and our own performance. Then the next time you notice yourself winding yourself up about, oh, if this doesn't happen and I need this and I don't have enough and just see what happens if you press pause on that thinking. See what comes up instead and see what happens if you don't start from needy. And I'd love it if you share your experiences of that in the comment section. Have fun, learn heaps. I'm about to go have fun and learn heaps. And I'll talk with you soon.